I'd like to cover uh, the concept of conditional mean independence that's discussed in Chapter 7 in Stock and Watson. Uh, and uh, the idea here is that our assumption about regressions that enables us to say that the estimated coefficient is, is valid or credible or that is not biased uh, can be somewhat weaker than we've had in the past. In the past, our assumption for the validity of the coefficient for it to be unbiased has been that the error term in our regression is not correlated with uh, the included variables. That is, the error is not correlated with x1 uh, and uh, x2 if we have two variables and included in our regression. And what we're going to do now is assert that this condition, which is a weaker condition, uh, which is that the error term is uh, uncorrelated with x, controlling for x2. So the expected value of the error term is equal once we control for x2. So if we control for x2, the expected value of the error term controlling for x1 and x2 is the same expected value as of the error term if we just controlled for x2 alone. So the error term is no longer correlated with uh, x1. So we're going to assert that if that's true, then the expected value of beta 1 hat, our estimated coefficient, will be equal to the true coefficient beta 1. So beta 1 will be un unbiased. So that's what we're going to um, show. We, we're asserting that here. We have our typical regression model with just two variables. This can be generalized, of course, to having three or more uh, variables. Um, so let's go ahead and prove or show that uh, if the conditional mean independence uh, the conditional mean independence assumption holds, um, and I think it's usually written CME, I don't know why I'm writing it CME, conditional mean error, or something like that, uh, holds, um, then the expected value of the beta 1 will be, uh, beta 1 hat that we estimate will be equal to beta 1, that is, it will be unbiased. So, <coughs> let's start by assuming that uh, this uh, error term that depends on x2 hat depends linearly on x2 hat. Uh, so uh, gamma 0 and gamma 1 are just two numbers. They're just uh, constant. And we'll do this to make the proof easier. We could do the proof even if it wasn't a linear function of x2. But saying that the expected value of ui depends on x2 means, right, that as x2 changes, uh, the error changes. That's what it means to say that the expected value of ui uh, depends on x2 and is not equal to 0. Remember, that's our whole problem. The expected value of the error term is not equal to 0. So, for convenience, we'll just assume that it's a linear function of uh, x2. Now, notice um, when we when we do that, uh, we can, uh, uh, I think, let me make sure it's not, uh, yeah, on the next page. So let's, uh, that, that's our step one. Our step two is going to be to, um, let me get another pen here, sorry. Uh, my screen is no longer, so uh, reading these in, so... That was step one. Now we go on to step two. Sorry, my screen's a little uh, fussy today. So we're going to define v1, or vi, I'm sorry, uh, to be equal to ui minus the expected value of ui conditional on x1i and x2i. So we'll just define this uh, term, vi, to be equal to the error minus the error's expected value. Remember, the error's expected value is not equal to zero. So this is not equal to zero, uh, which it normally is or has been so far. We've been assuming that it's equal to zero, but now we are no longer assuming that it's equal to um, zero. Now, let's notice about ui, uh, vi, I'm sorry, that the expected value of vi 
is actually equal to zero. And why is it equal to zero? Well, vi is defined as ui minus the expected value of ui. So if we take the expected value of that, conditional on our levels of our explanatory variables, we have the expected value of ui minus uh, the expected value of ui conditional on xi hat. So we distribute this expectation operator to the two terms that we have here, and that's the expected value of ui conditional on x1i, x2i, minus the expected value of the expected value. Right? Now, one of the rules of the expectations operator is that the expected value of the expected value is just the same as the expected value. So this whole term is just the same as this. The expected value of the expected value is the same as the expected value. Uh, and so they cancel each other out and we're left with zero. So the expected value of the VI, this newly defined VI, is um, conditional on the two x's is equal to zero. Uh, so now we can do some algebra. We start with our main regression here, right? Uh, and then we substitute in for the uh, ui here, ui at the end here, we just defined it as equal to vi plus the expected value of ui conditional on x1i, x2i. Remember, just back here, we defined vi to be that, and so ui is just vi plus the expected value of uh, ui. So we're just substituting there, substituting in for the vi, and plus expected ui, x1, x2. But now by conditional mean independence, this term we've assumed is equal to this term. That's our whole, right? That's what we started with saying. If this is, if we can assume this to be true, that um, these two are equal to each other, then we're going to prove the coefficient is unbiased. Um, so we substitute in for that. So now we have, uh, we have a case, uh, equation three. Um, now we assumed earlier, just for simplicity for the algebra, that this expected value of the ui conditional on uh, x2 was a linear function of x2. So we just substitute that in there, right, and put that in there. Now we do some rearranging. This y0, we join with this beta0 and put them here. This y1, x2, 1, x2i, uh, we can uh, group with this beta2 x2i, so we group them together, the common factor x2i, uh, so we regroup. Um, notice what we have now, we have a regression with one term, two terms, three terms, and an error term uh, vi. So let's rename this to be delta 0 and this delta 1, so then we have yi equals delta 0 plus beta 1x1 plus delta 1 times x2i plus vi. But remember, we just showed a little while ago that the expected value of vi, conditional on x1i and x2i, is equal to zero. We showed that just a few uh, lines ago, right there. And so, this equation that we can estimate, has an, it's a regression, right, with y, yi as the outcome, x1i is one explanatory variable, x2i is the second explanatory variable, it has the classical ordinary least squares assumption being true, so that means that beta 1, when we estimate it and get beta 1 hat, that beta 1 hat will be unbiased. So we just demonstrated what we set out to um, show. Now, notice this will not be true, that is, alpha 1 will not be equal to beta 2, because we can go back and look right here and see that alpha, uh, sorry, delta 1 is equal to beta 2 plus lambda 1, and we don't know what lambda 1 is, um, I'm sorry, gamma 1, uh, so it's beta 2 plus gamma 1, we don't know what gamma 1 is, uh, and so uh, our knowing what delta 1 is when we estimate this regression doesn't tell us what beta 2 is, we don't know what beta 2 is, um, and, and delta 1 would be a biased estimate of uh, beta 2. So uh, we know that that's the, the case. So all we can say is that the coefficient on the x1, the, our variable of interest, is going to be unbiased. Um, so if we include relevant control variables 
in our regression so that the error term is uncorrelated with the variable of interest, x1, let's call it, then the coefficient of beta 1, beta 1 hat, will be unbiased. Notice this is an assumption that we make when we're running the regression and interpreting the results. But it's an assumption that's weaker than the assumption that the expected value of the error term conditional on the x's is equal to zero. And that's why it's a, it's a powerful assumption to be able to make.